improvisational skills. T. Will did not hear me say that we were not emotionally <laughs> committed. It's kind of like my wife. She doesn't listen to me either, so. Um, I'm just in awe of um, the players' character. Uh, I'm in awe of the support staff's knowledge, uh, Saudi Washington and Howard Isley. Um, I managed that game. And uh, Howard Isley coached the offense every possession. And uh, Saudi Washington scout, and we collaborated on you know, how we wanted to try to deal with, with uh, not just not just one of the best players in the country, but an offensive mind in Chris and his staff, uh, and it was it was a challenge, and I would say productive use of our time yesterday. We did not practice on Friday, but productive use of our time um, Saturday uh, was the result. What we wanted to try to be was balanced. We didn't want to come out of here and say, well. We were too high or too low. We don't want to come out and say we're too physical. We just wanted balance. And I, I thought we did that. And uh, the number that jumps to me is for us to have 24 bench points, that, that is just uh, an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, performance. So um, that was a really cool atmosphere. It was a really, really cool atmosphere. Uh, there was a kid behind the bench. I, I don't know if I'll ever see him again, but I want to thank him uh, because he kept telling me that I was bald. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I've gone along this whole time thinking I had a thinning hairline, not bald. So I appreciate him letting me know that. The other words that he was using with bald, not on a Sunday, fella, not on a Sunday. <laughs> Questions for Coach, go ahead. Uh, Phil, you, you spoke after the Iowa game about wanting a Hellraiser on the team. Was there one player in particular that you felt embodied that today? Um, not, not really, not, not vocally, uh, but their physical presence, the, the physical presence, uh, when I looked for it, when I told them that Hunter would not be playing, and their presence didn't change. Earlier in the year, maybe we would have shriveled up and worried. But uh, knowing that the change in kind of rotation, Terrence Williams moves up and Caleb played some four, uh, you know, come on. Jerome Foles got in that game, right? And and I just think that, that uh, it was yesterday. There was a sense yesterday that Okay, well, we're, we're going there. And, and I gave them this before the game that when you compete, it's cool to say, that, oh, we're competitors and we're competitors and we're competitors. But guess what? When you compete, if you and I are flipping coins, I want to win. So we came here to win. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way, but, but uh, that, that, that Hellraiser was every single one of them, every loose ball, the steals. I, I don't know what the numbers would say. Uh, come on, 11 steals. That has to be our season high. We were on every ball. So we were re raising hell on that court. Uh, every guy that got in the game. When did you tell the team that Hunter went to uh, The timeline, um, I went to Mass this morning at 7.30. Uh, came out of Mass and there was a text on my phone that he had been up uh, all night. He had not fallen asleep till about six o'clock. Uh, uh, and that we would see. He would not be at film, which was at 845. He came down about 920. Uh, I saw him go for some toast. And then when we got to the arena, I just blanked it out. Said, some, tell me what we, what, what we have when we get to the arena. And he didn't feel, um, he didn't feel strong enough. Uh, so at that point in time, I just, 
Yeah. I, even at film session, I said, look, I don't know what Hunter, what the story is with Hunter, so Brandon Johns, whatever you have to do for your pregame routine, you, you now are, you're, you're on, and uh, you will not be the primary defender on Liddell, but you will be the four-man on offense. So we flipped that. Um, and then uh, we, we just proceeded. Once we, once we got here and he wasn't strong enough to, to even dress, we, we were looking for like another gym. I don't know if they have another practice gym or where he could kind of go by himself and see if he could go. Uh, but as you can see, his, his coloring is, is off and uh, hopefully it doesn't run through everybody. I think there is a look. I don't purport to do as what you do all do, uh, but there is a storyline because his roommate on the road is Terrence Williams. So did Hunter like by osmosis? Did he become a scorer? Uh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Something to follow. <laughs> Uh, Devontae Jones had 14 points, five, uh, five assists in the second half alone, 21 and 9 for the game. Can we speak to his growth down the stretch heading into the postseason? It seemed like any time he needed a bucket, it was in his hands he was getting a bucket. Well, obviously, if you look at his numbers at Coastal, it, it's they're eye-popping. Uh, we out, watched a lot of film to make sure that he was the right guy. Uh, that's a tough spot. It's a tough spot to be a point guard coming into a program that is successful. Uh, and you're coached by a pro. You know, like Howard Isley has been to the highest levels as, uh, as a point guard. So he has a point guard whisperer, so to speak. And there's just been growth and a confidence and uh, you know, we, we can't walk out of here and, and, and not acknowledge what Frankie, Frankie Collins did. And Frankie Collins' growth is due to Devontae's growth. Devontae has, has been for us all year long a good practice player. I don't mean like the results are always good, but he gives you an honest effort and to see him rewarded. And I, I can't tell you how many of those floaters we've taken, you know, like, Whatever that that, uh, and I'm I don't remember the man's name, but the good to great idea, like we're co closing in on ten thousand floaters. So he, we have confidence. It, he has confidence, and uh, I'm really happy with his finishes. I I just thought, I believe I believe in college basketball. You win through your point guards, and. Uh, Certainly, DJ led us today. Michael? Phil, during this uh, the five-game stretch where you were filling in for Juwan, did you, I guess, learn anything or see anything about this team where you were looking at it from a different perspective than what your role was, was previously? Did that allow you to learn anything wow. new or clean hmm. anything about this group? No, I no, I don't think so. I, I'm look, they're good young people, uh, with the emphasis on young, and uh, I, I thought this, but I, but I but I am amazed at, it. like they're resilient, in that there was an easy excuse to not play well against Rutgers, right? That was easy, and then. To come back after Illinois, that, and that was physical. That was a physical challenge, Illinois. And yet we came back and we had this energy. Um, and I think besides resilient, I would say adaptability. Because there are some things that I do different. Like it's a small thing. Like I don't use a whistle in practice. I would rather train them to listen to my voice not train in terms of like, no, you know, no. I would, I would rather coach them to listen for my voice. Juwan uses a whistle. That was different. Um, so they were adaptable. And 
they allowed us to coach them and they allowed us to direct no excuses no excuses right had we walked out of here instead of three and two two and three no excuses we weren't good enough those the two nights we weren't good enough but i would say resiliency and adaptability Thank <laughs> you.